And we are in the kitchen with Executive Master Chef Robert Saliza from City Dock Restaurant in Norfolk this morning making warm tuna salad. Um, before we get to that, though, uh -huh. uh, we want to get started with, you said, the bread pudding. Bread pudding so can yes. we go through the list of ingredients for the bread pudding here? Sure. You've got, the, of course, the bread that I've uh, cubed. Of course, leave it out at night, let it get a little bit hard, and then go ahead and cut it into the cube size. Sugar, your eggs, your brown sugar, your vanilla, your pecans, of course your milk. Mm -hmm. And then we have the sauce that I'll prepare on this side with butter, brandy, more vanilla, and more sugar. And that'll come as we're getting all this together. It smells very sweet over here. It does, here. yes. Well, that's... that's oh, is that you? <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> what I've done is I went ahead and put the egg in. Okay. And then I'll put my vanilla in, get mm -hmm. all that mixed. Now, a lot of people will put their pecans in. I prefer to put it this way. And yeah. why do you prefer it that way? Well, I don't want the pecans to get all soggy. I want them to stay crisp. Okay, so I'll that put sense. that in last. Brown sugar goes in. And should that I should be about you a... Put that in there? You can. Thank you. have my skill. I feel like it's going to spill out of the bowl. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> Trying not to splash it out for and you. Then the regular sugar goes in. About a cup and a half to two cups. Mm -hmm. Just have to get it all mixed in there. That's an egg. Just like you're doing at home in your kitchen, right? Same mm -hmm. thing. I watched my grandmother do this for years. She made really great bread pudding. I'm excited to taste yeah. yours. And this is so good because uh, you always have bread left over from meals. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be Italian bread. It can be, I've seen Paula Dean make it with Krispy Kreme donuts. Um, I mean, <laughs> That just, sounds like you need to reserve a room at a heart hospital. Well, that <laughs> plus one tablespoon, it's time for you to... Stop checking calories because I'm sure there's probably <laughs> so. there's probably millions of them in there. <laughs> but she'll make she it. She loves butter. She loves butter and she loves to make it with <laughs> with uh, Krispy Kreme donuts. She'll put five oh or six goodness. dozens into one one bowl like this, and it's oh. you don't have to have sugar or you don't have to have anything. That's there. But I gained weight just hearing those words. Thanks yeah, a lot. <laughs> but you know, she's an icon. Whatever she does, so her food you, tastes great. You can't, can't say nothing argue bad it. about her. I'm going to go ahead and let that sit and soak now. It should okay. sit and soak for about 10 minutes, okay? Gotcha. Then on the, on the sauce now, I've went ahead and started melting the butter. Mm -hmm. And how much butter did you put in there? Put in about a half a cup. Okay. Now I'll put the vanilla in, and I'll put the sugar in. And how much sugar do you have? Half a cup, usually okay. about a half a cup. And I'll get that going. And when we get, when we get this going here... This, of course, you're going to let it thicken, as it, just like mm -hmm. you would if you're making regular, uh, any type of pudding or something. You want to get that sugar all melted. Mm -hmm. And then once you've got it where you see it's almost melted, take it off the stove, put the brandy in, okay. and then put it back on the stove, because it could flame up on you. Okay. You, know, you never want to put it with it right on top of that. And do you have to constantly stir? Constantly so stir, it. keep it going, and then with, until it starts to boil. Then it'll start to crystal, like mm -hmm. you're making you know, caramel or something like that. While that's getting ready, I'm going to go ahead and put the tuna in for our next segment because okay. that's going to be cooking. I'll have to cube that. Now, what I've done here sure is. is I've got the tuna. It's fresh tuna. Mm -hmm. it's, fr it's grade one. Looks great. That's the sushi tuna. Mm -hmm. I've already hit it with salt and pepper, and I'm going to go ahead and put that in the oven to get that started. Do you salt and pepper both sides of it? Both sides. Mm -hmm. And then just a light coat of, of olive oil. And just let that sit in there, and then uh, we'll just work it together. All Once right. that's all soaked in, I'll put it in the bowl. Mm -hmm. And you can use the sauce over it after it's done. I prefer to mix it with so you can get the cooking flavor okay. right in it together. Okay. I just think that it's so strong with the brandy that mm -hmm. it'll kill it because I want to put ice cream on top of that after. So. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, we'll keep working on this. And okay. in the meantime, we're going to get a check of the weather. We're in the kitchen with Executive Master Chef Robert Saliza from City Dock Restaurant in Norfolk this morning. We're making warm tuna salad. So yes. We already worked on the bread pudding. That's in the that oven. is in the oven. Mm -hmm. So what's our next step? Our next step is we went ahead and got the Chinese cabbage, and I've already chopped it up and just put it on there as a base for what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. The sauce, of course, is going to be uh, the fish sauce is in here right now with a little bit of ginger. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and add some brown sugar. You said the fish sauce? Fish sauce, yeah. So you can buy that in any store, mm -hmm. any oriental store. It's just all the oils from the fish that they okay. use. Fresh lime juice. You just squeeze to taste or well, put a certain Well, I, I just put about a teaspoon in. Mm -hmm. It's got to have fresh garlic, so let, of let, let the Italians know what's going on. Yeah, <laughs> I was wondering if you were going to give them a shout out today. A little bit of rice vinegar. <laughs> and then not too much of... Uh, the red pepper, because you, you want to have a bite, but you don't mm -hmm. want 
you know, you don't want to uh, overpower it and stuff. Now, this is a splash of the rice vinegar? About or a teaspoon, a okay. teaspoonful. And I'm going to mix that up in there and then, of course, let it sit like a marinade. And mm -hmm. that'll be actually your salad dressing that I'm going to put over. All right. Our tuna should almost be ready. <coughs> How long did you have that in the oven for? Well, probably about uh, eight, ten minutes. And that was on 400? On 400 degrees, yep, and that's ready to go. We'll go ahead and take that out. And what I'll should let... folks be looking for with the tuna when they're making this to know that it's ready to come out of the oven? Well, when you, when you press on it mm -hmm. and it sort of springs, springs back a little bit, mm -hmm. then you know it's ready. Tuna should always be served medium rare. Okay. If you want to have it where it's, you're worried about it, you can cook it all the way, but then if you're going to use a marinade or something like that, then that's okay because mm -hmm. it will bring the moisture back into it. And once it's all ready, I'll go ahead and get start cubing it because you want to have the salad actually served warm. Mm -hmm. But see how still it's nice and pink in the center? Right. That's what you want to have. So why do they want it that way? I know some people say, I want everything I have well done. Why is it better to have it this way? Well, because you're, you're getting all the flavors of the fish, and fish should be eaten at medium rare. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can take it to the point where it's well done, Mm -hmm. uh, but then you might want to stay home because you just paid, paid for something that tastes <laughs> terrible. You wasted, you wasted your money on it, huh? And as I said, we're just going to lay that on top. Okay. It like smells that. good already. Yep. And then we'll just put some garnish for decoration on it. And you had just seasoned that, you said, with salt Se and salt, pepper. Salt, pepper, olive oil, olive and oil. that was it. And of course, a little bit more, just a little bit of a bite, a little bit more lime juice. Okay. And then we're just going to let that sit there. Mm -hmm. And everything's fresh, Everything which I really think makes fresh. a difference. It does. It makes a heck of a difference when you're eating. Uh, and you can taste the difference of mm -hmm. uh, just the quality of the food that's there. And we just put all, give it on your Chinese cabbage. When you get it, make sure you wash it. You know, okay. I washed it already before I did it. And I'm letting this sit here for a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. And then I'll just pour that over the top before we serve it. And it'll be ready. And then what I brought today as a little thing is, uh, this is just a memory of the people in Japan. Mm -hmm. This is their traditional uh, holiday food, their celebration food, their morning food. And it's just letting them know that they're in our prayers and since that country has become a partner in peace with us, mm -hmm. we just want to let them know that we're thinking about them. So I brought something Absolutely. as a tribute to them. Very nice. Very okay. good thought. We are good. certainly thinking of all of them. We're going to continue in the kitchen, and we'll wrap up here in just a little bit with the wine pairing for all of this. I know a lot of folks want to know about that. We're in the kitchen with Executive Master Chef Robert Salizzi from City Duck Restaurant in Norfolk this morning making warm tuna salad. And, of course, we're joined by Josh Hogg, Food and Beverage Director, also joins us now, of course, with what we look forward to, the wine pairing suggestions. First, though, we want to say that we have the warm tuna salad complete here. Ready to go. Yep, mm -hmm. and it's, the more it sits, the more it marinates and the flavors are mixing, and that's what you want. I've already went ahead and taken out some of the bread pudding and got it in the serving glasses because mm -hmm. I want it to cool just a little bit because I'm going to put the ice cream on it. Had it been at the restaurant, it would serve warm, and you give it right to the guest, mm -hmm. and it doesn't have a chance to sit and melt because they're right into it. So that's right. what makes it nice. And it looks delicious. Thank so you. how do you uh, match everything up with this? Well, what do we I, brought, have? I brought two wines today, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, I know Patrick was talking about Virginia wines, and mm -hmm. City Doc is also pr uh, participating in Virginia Wine Week, so we have some great specials there. Right. But we're going to start off in Washington State on the okay. eastern side of the state, uh, Columbia Valley, where Hogue Cellars is located, and I've selected their Gewürztraminer today. Mm -hmm. It's got great spiciness, apricot, peach flavors, um, and I just thought it would go so well with the uh, Asian salad today. It smells really good. It, mm -hmm. it really has a great aroma to it. So this is specifically for the salad? The warm tuna salad. Why did you yeah. decide to put that together with this? I think just the great acidity in the wine mm -hmm. just balances so well with the salad. So mm -hmm. Virtuaminers, I think mm -hmm. overall, if you're looking for something to, to pair with your Asian dish, it can many times be a great choice. Okay. Yeah. And what do we have right next and to it? Going back to Virginia here on the eastern shore, Chatham Vineyards. Mm -hmm. And a little story about how I found these guys is uh, my wife and I went on a road trip up to Atlantic City. And as we do with all of our road trips, we're always looking for places, something new, the next best spot. Mm -hmm. And we found Chatham, met the uh, winemaker slash owner and his wife, uh, Jonathan and Mills, and introduced us to their wines. Mm -hmm. Fantastic product, brought it all into the city dock. We do feature them by the yeah. glass and by the bottle. And uh, today, I felt with the bread pudding that their late harvest dessert wine would be an excellent pairing. Mm -hmm. This also and, smells great. And the base of this wine is actually Cabernet Franc and Merlot, mm -hmm. two of the grapes that they produce very well. And he's just had such a great uh, growing season in 07 with uh, about eight weeks of, of great sunny days and cool nights set up mm -hmm. the perfect 
opportunity to produce this dessert wine. So. Yeah. Well, that will certainly go well with that. You can just, the aromas there are amazing. And you also said that there's a fun event coming up, too. There is, actually, March 27th at Chatham Vineyards, which it, it's a short drive, only about 45 minutes, an hour mm. from here. Yeah. Uh, from 3 to 5 uh, p.m., it is a uh, wine blending uh, with the winemaker, with Jonathan. You get to go mm -hmm. in, you get to pull wines from their barrels and blend them yourself to come up wow. with the best wine. So you really get to play winemaker for a day. It's only $20 and mm -hmm. just a great experience. Oh, it sounds like a lot of fun. And you can also find them, of course, at the, um, at the Town Point Festival coming up in May, which mm -hmm. is always a fun event. So. Oh, yeah. People certainly look forward to that. That's for sure. for sure. Of course, we always look forward to eating everything in front of us here <laughs> when you're in the kitchen, <laughs> Chef Robert. So now you're plating everything. You just put the ice cream on. That's ready to go. And it looks perfect. Yes. Well, we'll continue to plate here. And okay. uh, in the meantime, we will check in with Cheryl and our live studio audience.